Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to introduce the um, clinical manifestation of the acute mesenteric arterial ischemia. The acute mesenteric ischemia is a life-threatening disease caused by an inadequate blood supply to the intestine, leading to cellular damage, ischemia, intestinal necrosis, and if, it, if untreated, it leads to patient death. Unfortunately, the mortality is still very high because of the absence of specific clinical science and specific laboratory tests that can be used by clinicians to detect it early on. And it's commonly classified in an occlusive and occlusive form. Underlies the low perfusion of the non-occlusive form, we can find um, disease like cardiac failure, sepsis, or treatment with vasoactive agents. Otherwise, the pathogenesis of the occlusive form can be embolic or thrombotic. The mesenteric arterial embolism is the main cause of AMI. In fact, as you know, the superior mesentery artery is the primary blood supply for the small bowel. And because of the configuration of the vessel and the relatively low oxygen extraction, the intestine is able to compensate about 75% of blood reduction up to 12 hours. So the blood supply must be reduced more than 50% before the ischemia occurs. It means that in the early stage of the disease, we don't have specific clinical sign. The key symptom is the pain. Patients complain about severe abdominal pain described as out of proportion to the examination. Pain can be diffuse, associated with nausea and vomiting, and hyperactive bowel sound without tenderness should be present. In the case of the acute mesenteric embolism, the pain can be a sudden onset. Otherwise, in the case of venous thrombosis, pain can come and go many days before the diagnosis is established. And more difficult for clinicians is sometimes to detect the non-occlusive form, because patient could be very sick under general anesthesia in intensive care unit, and sedated and pain, uh, pain can be completely eclipsed by other disorders, including hypotension, heart failure, and arrhythmia. So all of this can really delay the diagnosis. Uh, going through risk factor and past medical history is crucial because the different etiologies of the AMI can be associated with different comorbidities. So in the case of, we have to suspect the uh, embolism in the case of patient affected by atrial fibrillation. Or, for example, we have to suspect uh, the uh, thrombosis, acute mesenteric ischemia in patient with atherosclerosis, hypertension, diabetes, dyslipidemia. The low perfusion of the non-occlusive form should be linked, should be due to a low cardiac output in cardiogenic shock or massive bleeding, sepsis, or treatment with high doses of vasoactive agent. The vasoactive agents themselves can really increase the risk of AMI. Unfortunately, despite many studies, an early sensitive and specific lab test has not been identified so far. So we can use the L-lactate that is a biomarker of hypoperfusion, but actually is not so sensitive and specific for mesenteric ischemia because it can, the, the, its level can increase in other um, diseases like intestinal or non-intestinal disease. The D-dimer is not able to distinguish between patients with AMI from those uh, with chronic disease. And other abnormalities we can find can be leukocytosis, the increase of CRP, the increase of procalcitonin, increase of amylase, LDA, CPK. All of these, as you know, are not sensitive and specific enough to be used early in the diagnosis of AMI. Hopefully, some promising plasma biomarkers are on the way, like the intestinal fatty as in branding protein, the AMA, then dilatate. All of this can be used in the future because more studies are required in the, diag in the early diagnosis of AMI because it seems to be enough specific and enough sensitive to be used. If the ischemia is not detected as a consequence of transmural necrosis, the mucosal barrier may break down, leading to bacteria translocation, so leading to sepsis and septic shock. At this point, patient is very sick often in intensive care units, sedated and mechanical ventilated due to the respiratory failure. High level of vasoactive agents are required to treat the hypotension. Consciousness could be really impaired, and we can find also severe lactic acidosis, abdominal hypertension, renal failure, and multi-organ dysfunction. At this time, the mortality is really very high. 
So the failure, and it's difficult to move a patient like this from the intensive care unit to the operating room to the CT scan. So the failure to recognize the MI before the intestinal necrosis appears is responsible for the high mortality rate. It's, it's quite hard, it's quite difficult to detect the AMI in the early stage because of the absence of specific clinical sign. And very often the diagnosis is based upon a high level of clinical suspicions. And we don't have to underestimate the role of an early diagnosis and an early treatment that can really change the outcome. So to summarize, the acute embolism of the superior mesentery artery is the main cause of AMI. The abdominal pain is often the early key symptom, but is not always present. Medical history and risk factor are really crucial to help clinicians in the, in the diagnosis. Hopefully some promising biomarkers are on the way, but more studies are required. And again, an early diagnosis and an early treatment, treatment really can improve the outcome. Thank you.